Welcome to a video tutorial giving an overview of temperature and the various units we use to describe temperature. Let's begin. So the definition of temperature is that it's a measure of hotness or coldness of an object. The original temp temperature units are named after a gentleman by the name of Fahrenheit. And this, was, this temperature scale is hundreds of years old. And Fahrenheit was trying to pursue the range of temperatures possible. And he was able to go below the freezing point of water. And so that's why the freezing point of water ends up being 32. Our body temperature we're all aware of, and then the boiling point of water. Um, this temperature scale system was eventually, um, in the scientific community, replaced with Celsius. And so Celsius focuses on the physical properties of water. So Celsius defines zero as the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water as 100 degrees. So if we compare these two unit systems, we can see that there's 180 degrees Fahrenheit between the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. If we compare that to Celsius, we see that there's only a hundred degrees difference. Eventually, we also developed um, the Kelvin system, and we don't use the degree symbol here, um, but the idea of the Kelvin system is that we have put the, the absolute zero as the lowest possible temperature possible as zero. And notice by doing that, all temperatures are positive. And so that's in a very significant feature of the Kelvin scale. So when we're working with gas laws, gas laws only work in Kelvin, and part of that reason is because we need to always have the positive values. However, the relationship between the Celsius scale and the Kelvin scale is that the units are the same size. It's also 100 Kelvin between the freezing point of water I don't want that to be a decimal, and the boiling point of water, still 100 degrees. So here we can see that the units are the same size. Alrighty, so in converting between Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin, there are two things that we have to consider. First is we need to consider the size of the units. because we can see that between Fahrenheit and Celsius or Kelvin, the units are a different size. So our conversion has to allow for that difference. And then notice that the zeros, right? So the zero for Fahrenheit somewhere down here. Then we have the freezing point of water and absolute zero. So we have to make allowances for the location of the zero. Zero temperature. All righty. So Celsius tends to be the hub. I've put it in the middle on purpose. So we can have a formula that once we know Celsius, we can convert to Fahrenheit. Or from Celsius, we can easily convert to Kelvin. And here are the two formulas. To show the, how in these formulas work, um, notice this 9 fifths. Where does this come from? This has to do with the size of the units. Right? What if we take 180 divided by 100, guess what that reduces to? 9 fifths or 1.8. So this first term in our um, calculation is going to adjust for the different size of units between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then here we see the difference in the zero. So the plus 32 is how we adjust for the differences in the zero. When we are going from Celsius to Kelvin, notice that because we have the same size units, we don't have to worry about making an adjustment. And then we simply allow for the difference, the differences in the location of zero on the scale. So let's um, do one, one set of calculations to actually practice using the formulas that we've discussed. So now we understand where these formulas come from. Let's practice using them. So the hottest temperature ever recorded in the United States was 56.7 degrees C in Death Valley, California. 
Let's convert this temperature into degree C and, oh, oops, we already have it in degree C. So let's go for degrees Fahrenheit and Kelvin, right? So for degrees Fahrenheit, it'll be the 9 fifths, 56.7 plus 32. So we put these values into our calculator. And we get, oh my goodness, we would get 134 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, it's an amazingly hot day. All right. Um, and then if we wanted to go to Kelvin, right, that would just simply be 56.7 plus 273.2. So we'll punch that into our calculator. And it would be 329.9 degrees Kelvin. So in this case, the, with the 32 here in the ones, we'll leave the result there. And here are uncertainties in the tenths, so we can leave our result into the tenths place. So that concludes a um, brief overview of temperature scales and how to convert between temperatures. So um, go ahead and practice a few problems so you feel comfortable with these calculations.